new week here on the Blue Room on YouTube. I'm delighted to say we've got another great guest here for Brew of Blue. It's Rose, uh, Everton Rose. Uh, you'll know her from YouTube. You've seen her videos on Twitter and all that sort of thing. Uh, Rose, thanks very much for coming on. No, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, how, are you, how are you doing, uh, first and foremost? How are you, you finding the lockdown? Obviously, it seems to be winding down now, whether you, you believe that's right or not. But uh, yeah. how, how have you been coping yeah. with it all? Uh, I'm okay. Um, yeah, it's, I kind of want the football back, but it's not the same behind closed doors. But um, yeah, just, just getting by, really. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of us in the same sort of position, isn't there, in, in that sense? What, what nip back, but it's doesn't feel quite the same. Have you, have you watched much of the Bundesliga games or, or anything like that? Have you not on to a not much. I watched the um, Munich versus Dortmund. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I watched that one. But aside from that, no. Just, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I think with the Bundesliga, it's all about the atmosphere. But then, like, it's just, it's definitely missing. So. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, it is one of those leagues, I suppose, you think somewhere like Syria and there are a lot of stadiums and, in there with yeah. your empty, it's not really about the atmosphere, you know, across the league as such. Whereas in Germany, you used to full stadiums, aren't you? And you used to seeing the displays behind the goal and, and that sort of thing. So, so yeah, it's been a huge shame. But, um, have you not latched onto Schalke then, like a lot of Evertonians? <laughs> um, I've been keeping track of them. I, I yeah. watched the, the when they lost 4 0, like I saw the highlights for that one, and like John Joe Kenny playing them all on side, and that was against <laughs> Dortmund, yeah, yeah, so. it was, yeah, yeah. And then is it? Tadebo as well, another one we've been linked with. He was in the defence as well. So they'll fit right in, really. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. But um, of course, you know, you sort of mentioned there that the Premier League football does seem to be far away yeah. now. Um, you know, talk about the main side derby being played behind closed doors and all that sort of thing. But just, yeah. just first and foremost on, on Premier League football coming back in general, how does that, does that sit with you? Because... I think it's one of them where a lot of supporters are excited for it to be back and it's, you know, just to see football on the television. But you hear the players speak, yeah. you hear the pundits speak, you hear, you know, people in positions of power in terms of medical positions in this country saying it might not necessarily be safe. I mean, how does it resonate with you? Yeah, I mean, I my position kind of changed on it. So I did a video a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, that just said that we were having like the PPE shortage. So like the NHS were coming out and saying that they don't have enough PPE. And then when I saw that because the football clubs can afford it, then they would just buy and access all of the PPE that maybe the NHS couldn't, then I wasn't really for it. But I mean, it's so like, it seemed inevitable then that it was going to come back. So I'd rather that they are tested so they're safe, um, obviously, so the players are safe. Um, but I guess it's different for me because I'm not like I know a lot of Everton fans are season ticket holders and they manage to go to the game and living down south I can't do that so it yeah it's difficult I mean from a selfish point of view for the channel then yeah I bring the football <laughs> back because I can do my match reviews but yeah ultimately um society is opening up so you know schools are open again the beaches are full so in that way, maybe football should come back behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, you sort of look at Everton, you look at Goodison Park and you think it's been a, a huge advantage to us down the years in regards yeah. to Everton's record and stuff like that. But you, I sort of get a sense as well that maybe the players might be, maybe not on the Merseyside derby so much, but in other games at Goodison Park, they might sort of be a little bit liberated by the, <laughs> by, by no yeah. fans there, maybe not having so much pressure on. Yeah, by not being like shouted at and yeah, yelled at, <laughs> move or turn or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that one's famous. Um, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, like you say, like the home advantage that that would be good to have that. But maybe in terms of like away games, like quotes away, um, we might do better. Like I don't know. Yeah, well, I think in Germany that there's been a real upturn in away in inverted commas results hasn't there you know a lot of the, the away yeah. teams have been very much better in those games so we'll see um, and obviously one of the other things surrounding Everton's return that's been spoken about a lot is the potential for a Merseyside derby to be played in, in Manchester or to be played yeah. at Wembley I mean imagine that you know you said that you're based down south there's a Merseyside derby at Wembley but you, you couldn't go and see it yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then uh, I think, yeah, I think I saw somebody tweet the other day that Liverpool's record at Wembley isn't great. So maybe that'd be the best place to, to do it at. Is no. it they'd won like, I thought they, I actually don't know if this is true, but I think they lost like four out of five games at Wembley or something in recent years. And the one they would have won probably would have been against us in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic Everton fashion, uh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very disappointing. But, you know, with this, you know, in typical Everton fashion, sort of speaking on this, about this on a show yesterday, sort of all the hallmarks of an Everton return are there now. And we've already had two players go down with injuries before yeah. the game started. I mean, we'll, we'll take each case individually. Um, I saw your video about Jean-Philippe Gabarman um, earlier this week and some of the points you made are fascinating. And I think the thing that sort of interests me about this, you know, maybe interest is, is the wrong word, but I think the thing that sort of captured me in regards to all this is the, the mentality thing that he's going to have to overcome. Because yeah, he's gone through the protest, yeah. he's got back to the point where he's going to be, you know, looking forward to playing he's been back integrated with the squad and first team training and to go and then, to rewind yeah. to zero it, it must be so hard for the lad yeah yeah just yeah I saw a lot of fans tweeting about that one and mainly in support of him but then yeah like a few people just saying uh, yeah the extreme was like oh yeah just terminate his contract so I thought like the team the club that does so much are like off the pitch for like well-being and mental health like we're not going to terminate his contract like yeah, how, like that would be probably the worst thing you could do at that time. Like, um, but yeah, like just in general, so in that video, like I spoke about just the Everton midfield in general. Um, and I was looking at, I kind of like looked at the Everton midfield of about 10 years ago, or like five, what was it 10? Yeah, about 10 years ago. And I just thought like, we just need like a, a Leon Osman or a Tim Cahill or an Arteta. Like we need anyone who can get the team forward because I think Leon Osman in particular, like, really underrated. Um, he played on the wing for some time, then he played centrally yeah. and he scored great goals. And like the link up play between like Baines and players like that. And I just look at our midfield now. But Gabaman just looked like really tough. Like he essentially was signed to replace Garner. Um, and like we still haven't. And yeah, it's a real shame going into the derby and the rest of the, the season that we've lost him again. Yeah. I think I think the point you make about someone like Osman is a good one because the thing you'd say about Leon was just he was dependable and you could rely yeah. on to be fit. You could rely on to, you know, he wasn't everyone's cup of tea, granted, but you could, you could play him left-hand side, right-hand side, centre mid, behind the striker, and he'd do a job. And you look at the Everton options now, and I mean, I don't know about you, but I sort of look at every player we've got and say there's, certainly in the central area, you say there's a question mark over all of them. You know, Andre yeah. has just come back from a serious injury. Tom Davis is, you know, extremely up and down. Gilfie Sigurdsson goes mm -hmm. missing. Morgan Snyderman's injured. You know, every player in that position, it feels as though there's like an asterisk or a question mark above the red. Yeah, and then there's Snyderman as well. And yeah, I, yeah, I just, yeah, the midfield, like I've already said a couple of times, it, I thought before the injury to Gabaman that we needed at least two. And now I'm thinking like maybe two and, and alone. I know there's been talk about Garner. Hmm. Weirdly, like that maybe he's fallen out of favour at PSG. I'd have him back on loan as yeah. long as PSG don't try to get too much money from us. Then absolutely, like I think, I think a lot, of, a lot of people are in agreement, would be in agreement with you there, hundred percent. Um, and of course, I suppose in, in a funny sort of way as well that the Yerry Mina injury sort of robs us of an, another option in midfield because Mason Holgate could have maybe gone in there, but now yeah. he's going to be very much be a, a centre back for, for the rest of the campaign. I mean, that was just. It was just a point in the stomach that yesterday when that news broke, wasn't it? Yeah, and now only having two um, choice centre backs of Keane and the Holgate, like <laughs> yeah. experience. It's just you know, please like protect them. Like <laughs> if we get another injury, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Just well, that, that, that's it, isn't it? There's, there's there's nothing. You know, I think you know. Obviously, Morgan Feeney's been released. I don't necessarily know he's yeah. the club still training or that sort of thing. You've got Lewis Gibson out on loan. I mean, it's. I suppose this is so to go back to the summer and when we were speaking about transfers and defenders coming in and we sort of said we'll have to make do with three. If we get one injury, then we're going to be in big trouble. This is that, now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only Everton though could you know not kick a ball yet and have two injuries <laughs> already. It's just yeah. Yeah, and I suppose it's a big test from someone like Michael Keane as well, isn't it? Now coming into the side. Yeah, I think. 
if it's like the Michael Keane that played towards the end of last season with Zuma, like I know that they had a really good partnership. I'd be really confident, but it's just a bit inconsistent. Like I know he's spoken about his like, troubles with, with mental health and stuff, so I, we all should get behind him. But it's just, yeah, I think inconsistent is the word I'd use there. It's just, mm. I hope the good Michael Keane plays. Yeah, and I suppose in, in you know, look at this from a positive point of view, perhaps you look at someone like Holgate who at the yeah. start of the season, people you know, wouldn't have used him as a viable option, really. He was sort of very much the, the backup of the three and big question yeah. mark over him. And, he, and he, he came through by getting a chance through injuries and that sort of thing. So he, perhaps in midfield and, and, and in defence, the could yeah. be someone. Although you look at the options in the squad and say, I don't know who it's going to be. Yeah, because is, is it true that Gabaman could play centre-back as well? Yeah, he played that a little bit. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> massively, massively, yeah. massively so yeah uh but let's let's move on to chat about more positive things and, and that's you know yourself yeah. and, <laughs> and your uh your youtube channel um just for, for people who haven't seen it before uh maybe not know what you're about um when did you start it um so i started the channel a year ago this month uh, in may oh just yeah just last month in may and um well basically it's because, you know, I live down south and there are loads of United, Liverpool fans, Chelsea fans, and especially Arsenal fans where I live. So I live in North London. But there just aren't, of course, there just aren't many Everton ones. So I've been quite active on Twitter for the last couple of years, but I thought I'd just like start making a channel. So I do like match reviews, like we sign a player, what my thoughts are. Um, but yeah, mainly match reviews um, after every game. So yeah. it was pretty... Um, I mean, you know, for views, it was good, but under Marco Silva, it wasn't that much fun to, to do. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so sometimes. Um, but yeah, no, definitely under Carlo Ancelotti, it's a lot more positive and yeah, I'm enjoying making them, so. Yeah, I think, I think it's one of them, isn't it, in regards to, to YouTube, where you look at people, you know, I suppose in regards to football, the, the, the juggernaut on it, if you will, and you know, agree or not with how they do a lot of things as Arsenal fan TV, and they... They get yeah. most of their views when things are going badly and people from other clubs tune in to watch the best yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, isn't it, in that sense? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but no, like, there's been loads of Everton fans commenting as well. And yeah, it's nice to to interact with the fans. Yeah. And so, and so was it was it daunting for you when you first started out doing it? Because, I mean, it's... I think it's, um, it's, like that for, it's, it's like that for everyone, isn't it? I mean, doing... I remember the first time when we started going to video stuff and haven't you know haven't done audio, it, it was fine. But when you're putting your face out there and you're on camera, it's, yeah. it, it's it's another step, isn't it? Yeah, I think you definitely have to go into it with like a thick skin. So sometimes you might say something that people don't agree with, but that like that like that's okay. And yeah, uh, so I recently I did some videos for the Toffee Blues as well. Yeah. They're like a really popular channel. Yeah. And yeah, definitely in that one, because I was doing like player ratings and stuff, it's very subjective. And like through that, like, so not on my own channel, but through that, like people being like, oh my God, like, what is that rating for Pickford or something? Like you, yeah, you definitely have to get a thick skin for it straight away and, and not let the comments like put you off. Yeah. Do you want to <laughs> people who read all the comments and, and that sort of thing? Do you, do you go through I, them? <laughs> I mean, on my channel, yes. I stopped on Toffee Blues. So I was just going to make the video and then not look at it again. Yeah. I spoke to people on my channel um, talking about the video. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. And I, I suppose as well, one of, one of the other things which is important is that you're a woman talking about football on, on this platform as well. <laughs> And you know, there's, it, there's, there, should, yeah. there should be more doing that sort of thing. And I suppose for yourself, it's and you know, speaking to some of the girls that we've we've had on our channel, it's it's just, you know, it's daunting for anyone to put the voice or the face out there to talk about football. But I think for for girls in particular, it, it's especially daunting, isn't it? I mean, have you had other you know Evertonians who were girls coming in and speaking to you and saying it, it's great to see that sort of you know, it's great to see somebody out there talking about football like yourself? Um. Not many, actually. Um, whether they're not watching, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not many. Um, yeah, no, I'm lucky. I haven't had any comments like that of you know, you know sexism or anything. But yeah, hopefully that stays that way. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's great that you haven't in that regard. And, and just going looking at the channel going forward, have you got anything 
even planned any, any new features coming up? Um, so I think during lockdown was actually quite a, a good time to uh, like assess what the channel was, like if, if there are no games and there's nothing to review. So I, I did start a segment called um, Football This Week. I've done about three of them and where I just talk generally about any news stories. Yeah. Um, yeah, to do with football, like not just Everton, but in other, uh, all the other clubs and in other leagues. So I started that. So that's a, a good thing going forward. Um, I've also interviewed a few uh, Everton fans. I interviewed um, Mark, who's a, an American fan from New Jersey. Uh, sorry, Ever yeah, an Everton fan from New Jersey. And he just spoke to me about why he supports Everton and like Tim Howard and, and all that kind of thing. So that was interesting. So yeah, definitely like continuing with the match reviews um, and football this week. But then, yeah, just having other fans on just to talk about Everton would be good. Wonderful stuff. Uh, hope, and hopefully when, when all this calms down, if fans are allowed back at, at Goodison Park again, uh, we'll be able to see you there. I mean, would you be doing that sort of stuff, like the fan cams and that? Or is it not, not, not really your thing? Do you not think? I don't, I know, I don't think, uh, you know, when I go to the game, I just, I just want to see them through the game. Yeah, I'm not, mad, isn't it? yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. But um, and just very quickly, I mean, I'll, I'll put the link to your channel. Everything in the description below. If people listen to the right. podcast. Uh, click below YouTube. It'll be in the description. See, I'm still getting description to YouTube. I don't really know how it all how it all works. It's below, isn't it? <laughs> below somewhere. Uh, but for yeah. people who just want to find it, um, what's the the best way to do it? What's the uh, channel called? Um, yeah, so it's literally the channel's called Everton Rose, so you can search that into YouTube. Um, I also have a Twitter, um, Everton Rose uh, YT, and then that's in the link in my bio as well. Um, so yeah, that's the way to find it. Yeah, absolutely. Well worth a watch. Uh, go and subscribe, go and watch the videos. Uh, Rose, thanks very much for coming on. Really appreciate you taking the time out this morning. Um, Imagine you're very busy. Um, but yeah, really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, and hopefully, we'll see Everton playing and, and winning football matches again yeah, very soon. So. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. Brilliant stuff. Um, we'll have more Brewer Blues coming up this week. i uh, speak to author Rob Sawyer later on um, as well. So do subscribe. I think it's down there somewhere, the button. <laughs> somewhere, we'll yeah. It. yeah we'll it. it depends which side of the screen it puts you put on, doesn't it? <laughs> People who are watching this figure, he's an idiot, he doesn't know what he's doing, but uh, share it, <laughs> comment on it, go and check out um, Rose's channel as well, and I uh, will speak to you again soon here on the Blue Room.